Greetings, this is Captain Henson, and today we will be discussing Star Wars The Bad Batch, Episode 11, Devil's Deal. With me today is... Jedi Knight Luke, hey everyone. Going back to the duo this week. So, what's the plot? The plot here, just to put it in simple terms, is we see Ryloth under Imperial rule, and a very familiar face, that being Cham Syndulla, is initially on board with the idea. I say initially because of things that happen in the episode. Because throughout, his daughter, Hera, strongly disagrees with the way the Empire is treating the planet, and she wants them gone. And I'm pretty sure this is the first appearance of Hera's mother, so that was cool. Shared her color mm. scheme in terms of, one, the skin and also the outfit, the orange and white, which was a nice touch. And the appearance of her mother definitely explains to us why Hera has the very thick French accent. French. That's what it was? Well, it sounded kind of similar to TCWA Le Sakura, who did have a French accent. I could have sworn Ryloth was based on Africa. In terms of TCW, I could have sworn they had African accents. Doesn't matter. The point is, talk. we hear her speaking with the accent the entire time. So she hasn't yet trained herself, I guess, to speak with a, I guess you would call Galactic it a basic basic. accent. And along with Hera, we are also introduced to Chopper. And that was a surprise. I mean, you figure, oh, we're going to see Hera. Of course we would see Chopper. Well, it's kind of a surprise that Chopper has the ties to the Syndulla family in that way. Uh, if I remember correctly, Hera did say she built Chopper when she was really young. As someone who hasn't seen all of Rebels, I probably skipped that detail. <laughs> but I will say this. Given the art style here, Chopper actually looks like he's an older model. Thanks to TCW's art style, we get to see more detail, unlike the Rebels' art style, which was far more simplistic, so nice touch there. Uh, admittedly, we've actually kind of skipped the opening scene, so let's just talk about the opening scene for a second. We get a speech that kicks off by Senator Onfrey Tarr. And no surprise, the people don't like it, so then Cham has to come up. He gives his speech, crowd calms down, though obviously we see a few Twi'leks not happy with it. Orn Frita doesn't like Cham, but our main Imperial guy decides to just keep him around. Hera gets into some trouble and eventually winds up going with her uncle and I would assume that it's his wife on a supply run where we see the Bad Batch for this episode in their one scene. Mm, they'd been they're, dispatched by Sid earlier on. Yes, they're handing Gobby supplies. And during this scene, Hera and Omega talk about the ship. Omega wants to fly the ship, but can't due to Tech wanting her to learn every piece of it. And Hera's all about the fact that flying is about a feeling. And for those who've seen Rebels, Red A New Dawn, know that yes, she is a great pilot. But she's still young here and still learning the ropes. So, the three of them go back to Ryloth, Bad Batch bugger off, and, well, Crosshairs had put a homing device on their ship before they left. So they set up a trap. Cam and... finds out that Hera and his friend have been captured and most likely won't be given a trial. But they are attacked by Cam and a few of his guys and his wife. All of this winds up with Crosshairs assassinating Orn Free Ta and Cam's group being surrounded by stormtroopers. Hera's mother tells Chopper to get her out of there. 
and our main Imperial guy is going to put all the blame on Orn Freitas' assassination on Cam, and then the episode ends. So, this was very much a Rebels tie-in episode, which, honestly, I'm okay with. I like the connective tissue, I like the cohesion. Granted, Dave Filoni doesn't give two shits of a damn about the greater canon, but at the very least, he cares to an extent about his own stuff and the movies. I'm Ew. still not going to give him any credit for that, because, again, he doesn't care about the greater canon, but at least there's that. But, um, we'll see what this actually means. We got Kanan here, and now we got Heron Chopper. There is a good chance we're going to see them meet for the first time in this series. Those who are familiar with the new canon should know, their first meeting was in A New Dawn, which was much closer to the start of Rebels. And as Meaning. we saw with the first episode of Bad Batch, we saw that they don't care about their own tie-in material. Because keep in mind, Kanan was written by Greg Wiseman, who had a huge role in the first season of Rebels. And yet, that comic was, was retconned. By the first episode of this show. And the thing with A New Dawn is, that was one of the first pieces of New Canon storytelling we got. So, so there's a very high likelihood that this show might trample on that and render that worthless. Point is, don't be surprised if A New Dawn is retconned. Okay, positives. It was nice to see Hera and Chopper again. I never really cared about Chopper, but like with Cad Bane, it was nice to see them again. Especially Hera, because she, like the other members of the Ghost crew, I didn't feel like was developed as much as she could have been. I just think Rebels had a problem with writing its characters properly. And here, it was nice. And seeing Hera's mother was also a nice surprise. Seeing Ryloth again, having the Bad Batch take a back seat was also an interesting choice. I would say this is very much an episode where, if you didn't watch Rebels, you're not going to appreciate it as much as you would have if you had watched it. Because, yeah, if you watch TCW, you'll know who, you know, Cam Syndulla is, why Ryloth is such a big deal. But in terms of the Rebels connections, having watched Rebels would be good. For me, this entire episode was a very unexpected one. I didn't think we would see Hera or any of the Syndulas and Chopper. The Bad Batch being pushed to the sidelines again, but this time in an even larger way than they were two episodes prior. That was also a surprise. The interaction between Omega and Hera I thought was really nice. Seeing Ryloth again, there's honestly not much more I can think to say about this. This is probably the driest Bad Batch podcast that we've ever done. Which is funny, because this was honestly one of my favorite episodes. But for there really me, isn't much to say here. For me, this episode was okay. Because I know I said in the podcast for the previous episode, but I thought that one was one of the weaker ones in the context of the entire spectrum for the Bad Batch. And I very much echo that sentiment for this one. But that's not this episode's fault. I'm not trying to say it was bad. What's the likelihood that the rest of the season will deal with Ryloth? Because I think we have a good chance of having the final confrontation between Crosshairs and the rest of the Bad Batch take place on Ryloth. Maybe, but I personally think somewhere... This might seem a bit too on the nose, but I think Kamino would be more appropriate. I mean, if it happens on Ryloth, then cool, but... You've got to have all the pieces lined up in order for a big moment like that to work. And what significance does Ryloth hold to either of those groups? Well, not much, but you would have to explain why both parties would go back to Camino. The way I can sort of see it happening is maybe Crosshair's unit successfully lure the Bad Batch into a trap and they just happen to choose Camino as the place to do it. 
Well, looking at the episode titles, at the very least, the next episode is going to continue this Ryloth story, but whether or not it goes any longer than that, we'll just have to see. Something I do think we should mention very quickly is that we're now just over two-thirds into this season, and it's only now that the Bad Batch has started doing sort of multi-part stories. Like, you had episodes eight and nine, which were kind of a two-parter because of Cad Bane, and then you've got this episode uh, and most likely the next one, which would explain why this episode ended on a cliffhanger with Hera and Chopper riding away. Ending on a cliffhanger is something that hasn't previously been done before for the Bad Batch. Oh, and Besides also the just... Bane stinger. Oh, actually, speaking of which, we see Omega with the Bad Batch on the supply run. Yes. And even though it's an incredibly small thing, that, I guess, implies Omega reigned victorious in that game of Dejarek. It's certainly one of those things where, on the one hand, yeah, she could have won. But on the other hand, she also could have lost, but Hunter decided to let her go anyways. Considering how little time we've spent talking about the episode itself in this podcast, Henson, what are your hopes for the next one, just to round this out? Well, for the Bad Batch to play a bigger role, which I assume they will. Hera knows who they are, she now has at least some connection with Omega. So, I think she's gonna contact her somehow. The Bad Batch are gonna go, rescue Cam de Sandula, I would assume her mother dies here. And then, whatever happens, happens. I can't say I really have much in the way of hopes, because I know whatever they'll do, I'll enjoy it, unless they do something really stupid, which, outside of continuity, (laughs) they haven't done. So, that's that. I'd say, with that, we come to the end of yet another Bad Patch podcast. Overall... I really like this episode. The surprise Rebels tie-in was nice. And I can't wait to see how this little story ends. Bad Batch, please. You've given us two-thirds, or roundabouts, of solid entertainment thus far. And good quality. Please. You are six episodes away. Could we please, if you can give us, at the very least, good as the rating for those six, then we'll finally have a Dave Filoni Star Wars show that, for one whole season, isn't a mixed bag. There you have it. With me today was... Jedi Knight Luke. Hope you guys have enjoyed. May the Force be with you. And of course, the always fantastic and reliable Captain Ensign. See you all next time.